Hey guys, first and foremost, I'd like to apologize for the uh, kind of random format of this video. This is kind of uh, an update without any script. So please excuse me if it takes me a couple seconds to think of something. First and foremost, I have to say, and um, very good news, um, <clears throat> the second controlled uh, double blinded placebo controlled trial of Susan Shore's tinnitus device has been a profound success. Um, <clears throat> her research or her 20 years back to research of the dorsal cochlear nucleus and the hyperactivity of the fusiform cells in the brainstem uh, has yielded fantastic results with over a 75% reduction in tinnitus loudness. Now, what, is, what does this mean? Um, this means that the theory of Thanos Tsaunopoulos, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, um, and her research about the brainstem, the dorsal cochlear nucleus, is completely correct. Um, about potassium channel openers like uh, Zen 1101 and another drug that is being developed by Pfizer, um, potassium channels are required in the body to dampen excitatory signals uh, in the nervous system. And these potassium channel openers that uh, will be opened by Xen and, you know, RL81, which is Thanos' drug, um, should, in theory, based on the results of um, Susan Shore's research, fully suppress, if not, you know, suppress very much, um, the tinnitus perception and also hyperacusis. Um, let me explain to you guys a little bit how it works. <clears throat> so potassium channels, like I've mentioned previously, are required in the body to dampen excitatory signals. It's kind of like an on-off switch. Um, and when a person is exposed to loud noise or, you know, whiplash or any other possible um, cause of tinnitus, um, this, their potassium channels, this is again based on Thanos' research, the potassium channels are disrupted. They stop working. Um, this was proven in theory by uh, a <clears throat> controlled study on rats uh, that rats who were given um, the potassium channel opener a week after noise exposure um, did not show any um, did not show any signs of tinnitus development. <clears throat> so now what does this mean? What does this mean for us, the sufferers? Uh, well, this is fantastic news. Um, this means that uh, tinnitus and hyperacusis might very soon well have a complete uh, cure, as to say. Um, the science behind it is, is very advanced and very difficult. So if you guys would like, I will definitely be making a video more in depth about this in the future. Now to get to the second point, Liam stops tinnitus. Now, as you guys know, this guy is like scammer number one, charlatan number one in the tinnitus community, and his facts and just what his claims are absolutely baseless. Um, and a lot of his supposed success stories are people who have had natural suppression or anxiety issues who were helped with their tinnitus perception. Um, I'm having a little bit of a um, little bit of a war with him right now, uh, so. I called him out in his YouTube comments about not giving any updates on this massive news. And he just started just, I mean, his replies were quite civil. So I have to give him that kudos to you for not, uh, for not, you know, going off on me. Um, however, he refused to come onto my podcast and to discuss his, uh, his methods with me. Um, and it seems to me that he's going into full damage control mode. Uh, he can't seem to delete any of my comments because this will just validate my claims of him being a scammer. Um, so let's see where this goes. Uh, hopefully in the future, I'm going to be able to get him on my channel and interview him, but I highly doubt he's going to do that. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, uh, please leave a comment below and um, goodbye.